A tutorial on the newton raphson power flow example. This is part two of the tutorial. And uh, remember that uh, in this tutorial, well, we just took an example from Granger and Stevens' book. And this is example number uh, 9.3 of the book in section 9.4. This example is so general that hopefully you'll get a, a much better understanding of the newton raphson method. Now again in this tutorial we're only going to be concerned about the actual method. We won't really the step into the theoretical realm. Okay so uh, we left off here and uh, as you can see we kind of uh, worked our way from uh, the definition of the equations and then uh, how the equations were presented in the book and then we did our partial derivatives to form our Jacobian matrix. Now these are the uh, all the partial derivatives of G1 and G2 respectively. So when we say that we have uh, uh, the basic building blocks of the Jacobian matrix, what do we mean by that? Well the Jacobian matrix is a fancy word of just saying a matrix of the partial differential equations. So in our example the Jacobian matrix J that is equal to dg1 to dx1, uh, dg1 to dx2, uh, dg2 to dx1, and dg2 to dx2. So this right here is our Jacobian matrix. Not too bad, right? And we have already solved our partial derivatives here, so the Jacobian matrix simply equals 4u x2 cosine of x1 for u sine of x1 for uh, u sine of x1 and uh, 8x2. So here is the resultant. So again, we're still in this realm of the Jacobian matrix. Now, let's just make this a little bit smaller so we have some working space. Now let's just recap and talk about some of the variables that we already have and introduce some of our initial variables, okay? So first off, one of our initial variable, we'll call this uh, x1, we'll just place a star here just to uh, distinguish it from everything else. x1 is equal to 0, uh, that's one of our initial variables. And x2, the other initial variable, that is equal to 1. And we're going to say that the other initial variable, which is just a u, that is also equal to 1. And uh, remember, we've already figured out what our b1 and b2s were. So b1 is equal to negative 0 0.60 and b2 is equal to negative 0 0.3. Zero. Okay, so these are our initial values, okay? So now the next step is we're going to find out what our initial mismatch is. And in here, we're not really going to go over, you know, what these terms mean, not yet anyways. We'll first introduce the hand calculation part so that we get an overall understanding of how this process works, and then we'll go into detail a little more later. So the mismatch is equal to, well the first mismatch is, is uh, delta G1, okay? And we're gonna say that this is the zeroth iteration. And that is equal to B1 minus H1 of the zeroth iteration. And in H1, we're going to feed it the initial values that we came up with. And remember, these are the initial values. So similarly, we're going to have a delta G2, the, the zeroth iteration, that's going to equal B2 minus H2, the zeroth iteration. Same thing here, we're going to feed it initial values or our initial conditions. Now let's actually, uh, let's actually solve this guy. So uh, remember H1 was uh, we've already said what h1 was. Well, h1 is this term right here, which comes from this particular equation. So h1 is simply equal to 4u x2 times sine of x1. And h2 is equal to 4x2 squared minus 4u x2 times cosine of x1. So 
uh, all we need to do is we just need to plug in chug, right? Plug in our initial values into these two equations and we'll have our initial mismatch. And we already know what B1 was. Well, B1 is just negative 0.60. So we're gonna say this B1 is equal to negative 0.610 minus H1. Now H1 was for you sine of X1. And what does that equal? Well, now that's pretty straightforward, right? Because we know what U1 was. Well, U1, we set that equal to one. We know what uh, X2 is. We set X2 to equal one right 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 here look at this right there and uh, we know what x1 is x1 was set to equal zero so now we have four times one times one times the sine of zero now the sine term you know I, I can never remember if it's a zero or a one so I always have to draw this unity circle out and so we're talking about this point right here and that point uh, is 0 1 in the coordinate system, and this represents the coordinates for the y axis, and this represents the coordinates for the x axis. So, and again, this is sine, and this is cosine. So, we know that the sine of 0 is equal to 0, right? Sine of 0 is equal to 0. So, this entire term becomes negative 0 0.60 minus 0 and that is equal to just negative 0 0.60. And then this term right here, let's uh, equate that. So that is equal, well we know what B2 is, B2 was negative 0 0.30, so negative 0 0.30 minus H2. Now H2 was um, this term right here, for x, for x2 squared minus 4ux2 times cosine of x1. So that is equal to uh, 4x2 squared minus 4ux2 times cosine of x1. Okay, what does that equal? Okay, so now same same exact procedure, right? Uh, we know what 4x2 is. 4x2 is just equal to 1. And then we know what uh, u is equal to. u is equal to just 1. We know what x2 is equal to. x2 is equal to also 1. And then x1 is equal to 0. Now the cosine of 0 should equal 1, right? That entire equation becomes negative 0 0.30, which represents this b2, minus, and then we'll have h2 in this bracket here. Hopefully that's big enough. So the h2 term is this term right here, right? So first we have this 4x squared. So we know that is equal to this 4 minus this term right here. Now 4 times 1 times 1 times cosine of 0 is 1. So minus that by 4. So turns out this was a too big of a bracket. So we know that 4 minus 4 is just equal to 0. That term becomes 0 0.30. Okay, cool. So now let's uh, let's just clean this up. So Awesome. So now let's make this a bit smaller. Okay, so now that we've calculated this mismatch, let's now use the same initial equations to calculate each element of the Jacobian matrix. So the first element was dg1 over dx1. And we're going to give it our initial conditions. That is going to equal, well, well let's figure out what this dg1 over x1 equals the partial derivative of dg1 over dx1. That is equal to 4 times u times x2 times the cosine of x1. So that is equal to 4 u uh, x2 times the cosine of x1. And uh, 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 we know that that is equal, right? That's equal to 4. We know what u is, u is equal to 1. Uh, we know what x2 is, x2 is also equal to 1, right? These are our initial variables. And uh, we know what uh, x1 is, but the cosine of x1, uh, which is x1 is equal to 0, so the cosine of 0 is equal to 1, okay? So this partial derivative then just becomes 4, okay? Now let's move on to our next partial derivative which is dg1 over 
dx2 and uh, we're going to be inputting the same initial uh, conditions which is just uh, 0, 1, 1 and that is equal to again dg1 over dx2 is this guy right here which corresponds to this right there uh, that is equal to 4 times u times sine of x1 and that my friends are equal to 4 times u which u is equal to 1 uh, times the sine of x1 uh, excuse me the sine of 0 is equal to 0 so we'll put a 0 there so this entire term becomes 0 okay so now let's uh, go um, to our next uh, partial derivative so partial derivative of g2 with respect to dx1 and g2 with respect to ds1 was this right there which is equal to this there so that's 4ux2 times sine of x1 so we're going to give it this initial conditions uh, 4 times u times x2 times the sine of x1 and that is going to equal 4 times u is just 1 x2 is 1 x1 is 0 so the sine of 0 is going to equal uh, 0 right there so the sine of 0 is equal to 0 so that is also equal to 0 there all right so the next partial derivative is this dg uh, 2 over dx 2 and again we're going to feed it the same initial conditions uh, that derivative is equal to this guy right here so 8x2 minus, uh, I think there's a square there. No, there isn't. So 8x2 minus 4u times cosine of x1. So 8x2 minus 4u uh, cosine of x1. Okay, now that is equal to 8 times x2 uh, x2 was this term right here, so it's 8 times 1, which is just 8, minus 4 times u is 1, times the cosine of x1. Now, the cosine of x1 was just uh, 1, right? Cosine of x1 is just 1, so that becomes 4 times 1 times 1, and that is equal to 4. Okay, so now let's... Um, make this guy really small okay so we have our partial derivatives uh, for the zeroth iteration so I forgot to mention that this guy so let's zoom in here so these guys are for our zeroth iteration so our partial derivative for the zeroth iteration Okay, so which means um, that the Jacobian matrix, uh, the zeroth iteration of the Jacobian matrix, that's going to equal uh, the partial derivative. Okay, so that's going to equal this guy right there. Okay, so the part, uh, the Jacobian matrix for the zeroth iteration is uh, the partial derivative of G1 with respect to X1 for the zeroth iteration and uh, g1 with respect to x2, dg2 with respect to x1, dg2 with respect to x2, which is uh, this term right here, which is gonna be four, and then this term, dg1 over um, dx2, which is this guy right here, dg1 over dx2, that's gonna equal to zero, so this right here is zero, and then, um, uh, dg2 over dx1, dg2 over dx1, that's going to equal 0. Uh, dg2 over dx2, dg2 over dx2, that's going to equal 4. Alright, so this is looking pretty darn good. So now let's, uh, let's make this guy small. Alright, so before we continue on to part 3, um, if you haven't already, please click on the bottom right corner of the screen and subscribe if you have questions. There's a link on the bottom of this video to the forum, the Q&A forum. Just click on that link and ask away. Um, 
And lastly, this video was brought to you by generalpack.com, making power systems intuitive. Thank you.